This is day four in my six mark challenge for AQA GCSE Science. In the run up to the exams, Monday to Saturday, I'll be posting a new video with a six mark question so you can practice how to answer them. You can find a link in the description below to each week's questions and access all the videos via the playlist. In today's question, two students are trying to investigate whether listening to classical music is going to influence their reaction time. Before you dive in, a couple of quick reminders. Firstly, your ideas need to be presented in a logical order, but that doesn't mean that you need to answer in full sentences. You aren't going to get any extra marks for using paragraphs. And in fact, I would strongly encourage you to use bullet points, numbered lists, which are great for questions like this where you're writing a method, or tables. You may also want to consider writing a little plan. Your examiner can give you marks for the plan, even if you completely run out of time on the exam paper and don't finish writing your answer. It's also really important that you make sure you answer the full question. So a really common mistake that people make with method questions like this one is to talk about doing a certain investigation once and gathering data, but they then forget to actually do something that will allow them to answer the question. So think really carefully about that. If you haven't already answered this question, pause the video now and give yourself six minutes to write an answer. When a six mark question asks you about a required practical, or in fact any practical, it doesn't have to be one of the required ones, it's a really good idea to start by identifying your independent variable and your dependent variable, because it's really common that people write a method and they forget to talk about changing the independent variable or they forget to talk about writing down the measurement that they've made. And so if you've done that, it kind of serves as a visual reminder when you're checking to do that. So here our independent variable is whether or not you're listening to classical music. So at some point you're going to need to say, repeat the investigation, but this time listen to classical music. And then the dependent variable is going to be the reaction time. So you could either measure this directly using a computer program that would tell you exactly what the reaction time is, or you could do what most of us will have done in school, which is this ruler drop test. Now, for any question that asks you to write a method, I would strongly suggest going for a numbered list, because that way, when you need to say repeat and change this, you can say repeat steps one to five, and that's just a bit less unwieldy. So here we're going to start off, and the first thing that happens is that you sit with your wrist supported on the desk so that your hand is not going to move and change the height. Then a different person, your partner, is going to take that ruler and they're going to position it so that the zero is in line with your forefinger and thumb. So we're always starting from the same height. They're then going to drop the ruler. And the important thing here is that they don't give you any warning that they're going to drop it. So they're not going to go three, two, one and then drop it. You don't necessarily need to have said in your method and they do it without warning, but you definitely need to have not said they should count down and then drop it because that would lose you the mark. So you're then going to try to catch this ruler. And crucially, your partner is then going to see how far did the ruler fall before you caught it and write down that number. So lots of people the last time that this came up didn't mention that and so they didn't get the mark. Then we'll talk more about this in a minute, but often what we're going to do is compare the distance that it's fallen to a table that says, oh, if you caught it after seven centimetres, your reaction time is 0.2 seconds. But if you caught it after 20 centimetres, then your reaction time is 0.4 seconds and something like that. So we've actually got a time rather than a distance. Then you're going to repeat steps one to six, but this time listening to some classical music. And then we're going to repeat the entire investigation to allow us to look for repeatability and to allow us to calculate a mean. Whenever you talk about repeating within one group that are all exactly the same as each other, you should always be adding in and calculate a mean because often repeat on its own isn't enough for the mark. This is particularly vital if the question says anything about um, validity or saying you're trying to reduce random error, then you absolutely must include that line. Alternatively, instead of doing the ruler drop test, you can use this computer program. So you could talk about how all these participants would sit there and the pictures will flash up and they click a button and it records the reaction time. And then you do the whole thing again, listening to classical music, and then you do the whole thing again for both groups. So you can calculate a mean and do that sort of thing. Now, as we've done before, we need to think about what do we actually need to get six marks? So in order to get six marks here, we need a method that will work and that will allow us to answer the question. So we've got to have the ruler positioned before we start. We can't just drop the ruler from different heights for different people. We've got to have the ruler being dropped. 
we've got to have the person catching the ruler, we've got to make the measurement, and we need to do this again playing the classical music so that we've got the things to compare. Now, depending on the particular question we've got, you might be able to get away without comparing the distance dropped to that table. And the reason for that is that you know that if the distance dropped is further, that means the person's reaction time is slower. So even if you don't know the exact number, oh, this person was 0.2 and this person was 0.3 seconds, you can still tell whose reaction time was faster and slower. So although that's a good thing to include, it's not actually going to be vital to get you your six marks. So as long as you've got a method that includes the five asterisk points, then that's enough to get you your six marks. Tomorrow we're moving on to chemistry paper two and we've got another one of the required practicals to look at. Remember, you can find a link in the description below to all of the questions for this week's videos and there's also a playlist of all of the videos so that you can find them neatly up together. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again tomorrow for day five of our six mark challenge. If you found this video useful then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCC science revision videos coming soon.